Discipline and distant and uh, get some sleep as much as he can and try to rest his voice. Um, but he's sounding, he's sounding great. We're just being a little cautious with him right now. Just because, uh, like I said, just the weather change and the travel. Hey, Alex. I see you right now. You're messaging me. The guy on the, on the computer right down there is actually messaging me. <laughs> he's right <laughs> Yep, that's funny. He's messaging in here, and I see him down there working. Best lighting guy out there. He did a lot of work with uh, Motionless and White. He's big part and big reason for the, the, the lighting and the design and just the whole visual aspect of, of the show. Which older musical were we listening to? We listen to all the, all the classics. I mean, from everything from Sleep with Mac and Kansas and to Hall and Oates to um, just classic rock stuff mostly. And then some newer stuff, newer material. Not super new, but some of the newer bands out there that I really like, like Wage War, um, listening more to the Falling in Reverse stuff. Um, band called Thornhill I'm not too familiar with it but there's like a song or two that I just came across that I really liked it sounded awesome um who else is out there I'm trying to think of some some of the newer bands that I've come across that I really like uh, okay I'm reading a few more comments from you seeing some Familiar names on here. No, sorry, I'm not getting pulled into any political questions here. No reason for a debate. Um, thank you for the nice comments, saying we sound ridiculously good. Appreciate that. Yes, did we get the piano fixed? Yes. Thanks for pointing that out. I was pretty pissed off because the other night my piano didn't catch on fire because it's supposed to. And it was a human error thing with one of the valves. It wasn't open up. So, I know. Um, I guess good problems to have, but still, I, I kind of, you know, when you're looking forward to those production, you know, moments that are highlights of the show and cool visual things and then when it doesn't happen it's it's a bit of a bummer every now and then when you have a little slip up like that but we're all in, back in working order so hopefully that doesn't happen again let's see let me scroll through some of these names do i ever play les paul live now i used to in early days the first album stuff on tour i was playing my last pauls on the road i still have them part of my collection at home but i'm just strictly playing schecter my signature model that they built for me years ago um matthew clark i hear your brother uh let's see divisive let's see. so who's coming out to green bay anybody from green bay on here yet? Somebody's asking if I still play my Mesa Boogies. No, but I have my Mesa Boogie uh, heads at home. I'll probably keep them forever. Great heads, but I haven't taken them on the road in a long time. Um, I kind of have my rig dialed in with my Bogner Ecstasy head, 20th anniversary Ecstasy head. And currently, you know, an Agnator Armageddon head. Um, I might change that one out, but that's kind of been in my rack for quite some time. That mixed with the Kemper and with the Fractal. So I have four different guitar tones, four different feeds going out to the front of the house. So our guy, Brad, who's mixing, um, he can blend it to his liking out front, what works for him through the PA. So... It's pretty badass having four great tones just kind of combined. So I 
it sounds so damn huge. Denise, Britain, what's up, Denise? Sorry about that Buffalo loss. I was pulling for you. I know you're probably the biggest Buffalo Bills fan that I know. And uh, a bit of a bummer was watching that tail end of that game. Uh, yeah. No offense to you Kansas City Chiefs fans, but I would have liked to see Buffalo get it this uh, get that win. What's up, Tony from Joker? Longtime friend. Yeah. <laughs> so Tony is a great singer. Chicago land area. Been around the music scene for many years. Just like we were. Tony was like one of the first local bands that I seen when I when I was young, like in my teens, and he was already tearing it up with some of the best musicians in the Chicago land area. And I learned my first arpeggio on guitar through his guitar player, Joey. He showed me how to do an arpeggio, and that's how I had to work my guitar sweeps. But yeah, he's a total shredder. Okay, who else is on here? Give it a couple more minutes here, and then uh, maybe I'll take you a walk through my guitar world. That's what I'll do. If you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, and go to my side of the stage, and I'll show you my guitars on tour, my guitar rig. Might get a little noisy over there. A lot of people working. While I'm just walking around drinking my sweet tea, my raspberry tea. Make sure I don't trip down these stairs and look like a fool. Okay. We are walking. So. We're in a, in a ice hockey arena, as you can see these little sheets on top of the ice. I could feel them shifting a bit here. Anyways, here we go. Here's the stage up close. Go into my guitar world. Here's our monitor world and our guys, Ashton. Our stage manager, Nick, right here. There's my, oh, my guitar world's not open up yet. But I'll walk past it. There's a bunch of my guitars in there. The rest in the air. All of this is all. That's the workstation to restring my guitars and set them on. There's Jeremy, my guitar tech, who also sits in with us uh, for a few songs, uh, Sound of Silence, and a couple others we have him sit in on. But all this is all, they're taking the lids off now, so you're good. This is the backside of my rack. As he flips it around. The reveal. Jeremy turns around and laughs at me. <laughs> if I didn't have him <laughs> doing this for me, I would have no fucking clue. I used to, years ago, when we first built it, but then I forgot because I am spoiled and I had him do it all for me. So. It's not like 
the old school days of just taking a cord and plug into the head and play. I have to be complicated and have all this other stuff going on. So I'll show you. Oh, you fucking laid a house today, you son of a bitch. There you go. A lot of swearing out here with these workers. This is a, supposed to be a family environment. We got children on here live, right? So here's the here. There's a fractal. A bunch of other stuff. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Jeremy does. So if you have any questions, you can ask him. No, somebody's asking where the Randall is. The Randall is no more. But the Eggnator head is from Bruce Eggnator, who designed some stuff for Randall. Here's Jeremy's workstation. Where he does all the magic to the guitars and gets them ready for the shows. Here's a bunch of drawers. I don't even know what's in there. I might get yelled at for going through it. There's uh, Jeremy's happy, happy tissues. Jeremy, I do need that. When he's over here bored, he needs to take care of himself. <laughs> so. Funny how he has those in here, though. And then just, these are a bunch of backup parts. Oh, well. That's his, Jeremy's pedal board. When he comes out to play on a few of the songs. That's his other one. Oh, he's got a nicer setup than me. Bastard. There's some of my spare backup pedal board. Trash panda. Panda panda. Here's my pedal, my other pedal board. I think. Yeah, that is. That's okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that's my main one or my backup, but they're identical. Well, I guess it is main. It says main. Boom. That's what I use. Although I'm not using the Banshee talk box at the moment, but that's in there in case I want to <clears throat> incorporate that. And I, anything else? There's a tuner for when I switch over to my acoustic guitar stuff that mutes and unmutes it. And then the Mastermind GT pedal board. The expression pedal in the Crybaby Wah. So. Okay, here's some of the guitars. Acoustics. These are some that Jeremy plays, these other shotgun guitars. This one for Don't Tell Me. Drop B tuning. And then here's some of my other ones. Hey Nick, do we use, do you use this for something? And I use pretty much all of these during the show. Excuse me, Dad. Oh, sorry about that. There's Ashton. I'm getting yelled at. See, I'm getting in the way. Ashton's our monitor guy. But I got the old school snake skin. I got a one tribe, the 22 kill guitar that I had made. That's uh, paying respect to our veterans. For those of you that haven't heard of the One Tribe Foundation, um, the 22 kill is organization uh, just bringing awareness to on average 22 veterans a day commit suicide and that's an insane number and we have to recognize that that's a problem and do our best to bring awareness to it and try to help those that need it right um that's a lot less than some of the other ones look at my red one i don't want to take all these out right now the white one and my black one with the disturbed guy out Like, you can go to live in that one. So. This way, maybe get out of the way. All right. Kevin, are you guys good here? That's Nick in the background. Everybody's pretending like they're working. I think they're just uh, tricking me. We're just walking around, just talking. Sioux Falls, yes, we haven't been there in a while, but we are coming soon. You're a mental health provider at the VA. Much respect to you, and thank you for your service there. So here's the back. This is just chaos back here. Cases everywhere, lighting. 
this is another monitor desk that's probably falling in reverse as monitor desk. So, strolling through here, there's something here. Oh, there's going through, ton of gear everywhere. Look at all these lighting <coughs> fixtures. Lots going on. You're getting a full tour here now. See, I'm so bored. And here we go. Ooh, we're on the wall over there. Up there, pretty cool. The Rush Center, Green Bay, Wisconsin, tonight. Oh, oh we might as well finish out the tour and give you a quick run through of the. Oh, there, there you go, up there. Take you to the dressing room. Might as well, right? We've gone this far. So, more cases, more signs, more vinyl records for us to sign today. What's up, brother? How are you? Good. Practice room where we warm up and stuff. Some more vinyl. And hallway. going into the dressing room. Very dark and vibey right now. John yeah. is in here. We're live on Instagram. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, There's John hanging out. Yep. Yep. Here's our wardrobe cases. Boom. Change from one black shirt to the next black shirt. That's how we do it around here. So they just open up our cases. Got a little practice amp there in the rig. Where's the other stuff? What are you drawing that? Right here. Oh. Oh, see? Practice room. So then we go in here and got a little, oh, stick us in a little closet, but a little jam room, with a little V drum kit, piano in the corner, a little line six guitar amp and a guitar. And we'll come in here and work off the cobwebs on some of the older songs that we haven't played in a while in case we change it up and throw in an audible. And uh, that's it. So we come in, make some noise. Let's see. Dr. Dre for you. Okay, my little warm-up guitar back here. J Money, named after my son, Justin. Boom. Okay, I know I've been on here a long time, so you guys were probably getting bored, but I gave you the run-through. You've seen the venue, you've seen the stage, seen the guitar rig, seen John. Seen the warm up room, seen the dressing room. So I'll jump back on here a little bit later.